Very good afternoon and thank you very much for coming for this class. So today I would like to uh, spend some time on uh, our practical project, which is to build a robot and race it. And I uh, uh, intend to uh, talk specifically about your proposal. Now, a proposal is a very important engineering document. So when someone is having um, a new project to work on or when you are uh, uh, working on any engineering endeavor and you would like to communicate um, the, the project objectives, outcomes, uh, costs, risks for the project to different stakeholders, you need to do that through a document that we call it a project proposal. Normally a project proposal is uh, a document that's used for someone to approve or disapprove or ask for uh, uh, improvement over your project. So we will use this uh, document to train you to write technical, proper technical proposals and the same skills that you are developing will be useful even in the future if you become uh, 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 an owner of a software company or a civil engineer who build bridges and ha homes and things like that. So the proposal, if we think of it from a CDIO point of view, do you, do you remember when we talked about CDIO? What does CDIO stand for? Conceive, conceive, design, implement, and operate. So at the moment of conceiving an idea in our, in our mind and while we are moving towards the design where parameters has to be start to be written and things like that, that's the proposal is a very important step or, 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 or a conduit for you to move your vision, your dream, which is just simply an electrochemical thing in your brain into reality, even before the final design is complete, the proposal is a document that takes you from the conceive to the design, where you could submit it, people could give you feedback, you could change it, and things like that. So that's why a proposal is an extremely important uh, uh, document. Now, before I talk about the proposal, I, I just want to run again through the uh, how are we going to mark this part of your module, which is the report. So the proposal will take or will 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 carry 10% of the mark, and the meeting logbooks will carry 10% of your mark. So we would like you to keep a meeting logbook. So every time you guys meet, we want this to be minuted and we will teach you also how to do the meeting logbooks. And eventually we, you will have to do uh, an oral presentation. So that will carry 20% where we will see your uh, teamwork, your design and so on and so forth. We would like every group to have a promotional video for, for their uh, robots to introduce them. So this will carry 15 marks. And the race itself will have 20% uh, for turning and, uh, and different maneuvers and the speed will carry 25% of the mark. So the winner would be determined by the highest scoring team. So it means if I make my robot great, it turns, it goes uphill, uh, it, it's the fastest yet, I didn't do a proposal. We met but we didn't keep uh, logs for that. Uh, we, uh, we didn't want to do a video. Then, guess what? You may not actually become the winner team. And the reason why we did this is on purpose because engineering is not only about making things. It's about the process of making things. It's about the capability of working with people and it's about how do we share and communicate our work. So if you are making a robot, we would like you to be able to talk about it. We would like you to be able to make a video about it. We would like you to, to show us how did you really 
use everyone in your team to work it out. Otherwise, if I only focus on this, I could maybe, if I have money, pay someone out there, a professional robo robotic designer, and he or she could just build it for me and I make a, a highly maneuverable, uh, uh, top speed kind of robot and I win this. So this is actually, is not about making the robot, but it's about making you better engineers. So I want you to see this as a process for you to become better engineers and be ready for the challenges uh, that you'll be facing next in, 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 in your life. Okay, so is there any question about this scoring um, part thus far? Okay, so there's a question from your colleague. Most likely this is a very good question and maybe you guys are thinking of similar things, so please pay attention. Um, for the promotional video, yes. what is the requirement? Should it be a certain time length? Should the, there be like certain information that should be in the video or any requirement of some sort? Yes. Okay, so what we are going to do, uh, we are going to, to give you what we call a rubric. And the rubric is exactly what do we expect in, in, in that, including the length. So the length, the kind of information. But this will be like a high-end kind of high level kind of information, we really would like you to surprise us. I mean, every video that you'll make will require it to be on YouTube. And if this becomes a hit video, that's gonna be a great thing. It means you have communicated your, your idea as well. But what we would like you to do is to always communicate the creativity that went through the teamwork that went through uh, the, uh, we, we want you to capture the special moments, the special learning moments that has, has happened. Uh, a, a statement from you, whether written or, or, or spoken, that would be uh, very useful as well. Okay, very good question. Any other question? If there is no other question, I would like to move on to talk about the design proposal. And um, uh, have you given them the meeting logbooks? The, the template. So have you guys seen the templates of the meeting logbook? Yes. Okay, have you guys filled at least one? Okay, so by today, I would really hope, after I do my presentation, we will go into groups and we will try, both myself, Chris and Mike, to go and help you. I want you to first use this uh, uh, meeting logbook template to document your today's session. So you today had a meeting with your colleagues. I want you to use this to document it because this carries 10 marks. So every time you meet, we would like you to say what has happened there and what was the, um, uh, the outcome. So I will, I will move on to the uh, design proposal. Now, as I told you, a design proposal is a document to communicate to someone who may not be aware of what you are planning to do, to let that individual or group or organization know what are you guys going to achieve, or planning at least to achieve. So this is the uh, the outline of a, of a design proposal. So it starts with table of contents, followed by an executive summary. So this, that summary is just tell me in half a page or so, what is this whole project all about? And in that summary, you will also need to indicate what is the objective, why do you want this why do you give this to me? Is it because you want me to approve it? Or do you want me to fund you? Or do you want me to partner with you? So because this is, the proposal happens for a variety of reasons. It could be because you have a new business idea, you don't have the money, you want me to support it. So if you want, if you want me to give you money, then there's a certain way to focus on, or certain things to focus on, which is if I give you an investment, what would be the return on my investment? Have you really studied this very well? Uh, uh, it could be because the proposal 
is for approval. And uh, your proposal will be for approval. So for example, you are uh, submitting this so that I approve it so that you can start building, building it. So if it's for approval, I want to see that you guys have really worked it out. Um, have you, uh, you have uh, um, uh, looked at all the risk factors, make sure that you have the eno enough skills that you don't burn the electronic components that we are going to give you, and so on and so forth. These slides are available on open learning. So I've seen some, some of you taking, take notes. Uh, that's totally acceptable. But all this information is already available on open learning. We were just worried because we didn't see activities on open learning. So we are not sure what are you guys doing. And hence, I'm repeating them. Then you talk about the introduction to, to, to your project. So this introduction, you talk about uh, the objectives, what do you want to achieve, uh, uh, and how are you going to achieve it, uh, how is the robot and the iPad and the communication thing taken care of, and, and things like that. Then you want to talk about the materials and the resources that you're going to need. So some of the materials are already prescribed. So we, we are telling you that you will need to use the Arduino board, the communication board, the Wi-Fi unit that we are giving you, and also the iPad that we have given you. So these are things we want you to use. So every one of you will list these materials. Now, even if these are materials that we sort of make it compulsory for you to use, we still want you to list them. Now, when you, when you list them, you don't just simply say a board, uh, a Wi-Fi unit, I want you to do it in an engineering way. And the engineering way would be to put the number, the, uh, the uh, code for, for those, and this, these are things you'll find them on, on the components themselves. Reason is, if I were in a different country and I want to build a similar product to see whether you, what you are telling me is correct or not, I should be able to go and purchase or order these units because you've given me their reference number or their, their barcode or whatever. Then, the proposed budget. Now, the budget that we have given you has two items. One item, again, related to the uh, part that we force sort of everyone to use, but there is a small room for maneuverability. So, for example, are you planning to have a robot that has wheels or legs? You, you don't know, right? But that's you. But I mean, some people will, have, will make it have legs or wings. Now, how many wheels? Four. So you are thinking of four. Is there anyone who's thinking of three? OK, so some think of three. Anyone think of six? So, so there are people who think of different numbers of wheels. So now, how many of you, you, you think of only one wheel? Yes. Good. So, so some think of only one, one wheel. It's entirely up to them. It's actually quite possible. So what you could do is then you tell us how are you going to use the budget in terms of what kind of motors you are going to, do, to use and, 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 and things like that. Uh, 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 what kind of battery, how much is the cost of the battery and, and things like that. Okay, any question thus far? So anyone who's not sure what is the materials, resources, what is the budget, please ask. Because this is the time where you could ask and hopefully uh, I see that all of you are grateful for submitting your greatest proposal ever and you are happy and proud of it. Any question? Yes, there's a question here. Um, Mike, please. Uh, do we have to state the price of each material that we are going to purchase? Sure. Okay. So the question is, do, do, you, do, do we have to state the exact price of each thing that we are going to purchase? The answer is, if you know the price and you know what you are going to purchase, then that's, that's great. If you don't know, then we want to have at least an approximate cost. Okay. And, and that approximate cost has to be a reasonable number that you either have checked it online or you know, have estimated it based on some reasonable uh, way. Now, estimation is an, a very important engineering skill as well. So these are things that we are 
putting it on purpose because often as engineers when you prepare proposals for new let's say even if you want to build a new campus you won't be able to check the price of each and every you know grain of sand there is a certain part where you you will need to some somehow estimate it so that you give an estimated quotation for your for your customers so that they can make up their mind whether they are interested in continuing working with you or not but it's a very good very good and a very valid question any other question please Yes, please. So let me give you the mic. Uh, about the proposal, do we have to state the entire our design? Okay. So, so the question is, do we have to state our design in details, right? Uh, you be as detailed as possible. So, for example, if you are planning to use solar energy, but not a battery, we really would like you to, to, to declare that. If you are thinking of making a robot with only one wheel or three wheels or four wheels, so these are, these are sort of uh, broad lines. Now, let me help you with another question. I have given you a proposal and I wanted to make one wheel. And I later realized that it's gonna be very challenging to do one wheel. Is that, does that mean I cannot change? No, you can change, but there is a process for the change. So you cannot simply give me a proposal saying that you will make me a one wheel robot and I approve that and on the test date you, you, you bring me a, a robot with 10 wheels for example. You say you know you, you should know the one wheel doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. So if you have difficulties then you need to communicate to us that I, you are requesting to change your proposal and I want you to document that. So you, you give us a piece of paper saying I, I would like to request a design change. Then, again, I have to look at it and sign it for you. So this is how, how uh, real uh, engineering work works. You could design the campus in a certain way, but later, maybe due to non-availability of materials or uh, some environmental issue or even some regulations, new regulations has just came up, and then you decide to change any parameter, then you need to communicate that to the client, to the, to the customer, and you need to communicate it in writing. Okay, any other question? This has been very, very good questions. Any other question? Okay, I'll assume that you have none and I'll move on. Then we, did I talk about the, sorry. Then we will talk about the Gantt chart so the Gantt chart is really the timeline of your project. So I'll talk about this in details. And then the organizational structure and task distribution. So this, in your team, who does what? So this is the organization chart. You know, if you have a, if you have a, a, a company, you have the managers, you have the CEOs, you have the head of departments, and you have the workers, so everyone knows he is doing what and how are these tasks distributed. Now, the, the, the last part is, uh, sorry, before the last part is the conclusion, is what determines that your project is successful and how would you achieve it? So for example, you think that, again, that's, we, we want you to think of, of what's gonna be the future. So you think that your project, your robot will be able to race at a speed of one meter per second or half meter per second, whatever you think the speed that you want to achieve, for example. Now, how are you going to achieve that? And this is maybe your, the success from your point of view. Or maybe the success that you see is your, your robot is going to be, please listen to me, Please listen to me because you are going to ask about that. What do I put in the conclusion? So please listen to me. So in the conclusion is the part where you decide what makes your project successful. So you could say, my project will be successful when I meet all the basic needs and I will have a speed of half a meter per second. And to achieve it, I'm going to use 
high efficiency motors, for example. That's one way. Another person would say, I will deem my project to be successful if I achieve all the requirement of the project and I have made the entire robot from recyclable materials. So that's your measure of success. So you will use everything from things that you could find out. So you will be doing it with materials that are environmental friendly. Another person would say, I will achieve all the requirements so that I will go through the maneuvers and so on. But on top of this, my robot is going to be only, I don't know, 200 gram light. So, so you, you want to make it light. And because it's light, it's going to be hopefully cheaper and need less energy to, to, uh, to complete the race. Now, there is a reason why we want you to design your success measures yourself. So we are telling you, you pick the criteria based on which we are going to measure you. Now, whether we agree or not is a different story, but we want you to start thinking of what makes this project a success. And it could be related, you may say, I want to make it the cheapest, I want to make it the fastest, I want to make it the coolest, I want it to look great. And that's an important uh, uh, element to you. And we really hope that you guys will go even beyond these examples that I've given you and show us your creativity by having robots that achieve the task yet look and feel and behave differently. Finally, and this is a, an extremely important thing, we need you to reference anything that you have used. So if you have taken a picture from the internet, you have to put the reference. If you have taken anything, any information from a book or from a magazine or from um, uh, uh, any source, we would like you to reference that. Because anything that you do not reference, this is considered to be plagiarism. Okay, any question about this structure? Now again, this is, as I told you, is in your open learning and really you have to start working on it hopefully by today so that you guys are going to be able to uh, submit it to us on time. Uh, the, just, I just want to report to you that all the electronic parts are in my office and hopefully we'll give it to you by next week. The whole idea is we want to give you some training first so that you don't go and burn it because it's quite costly. Any other question? Okay, so I want to just run through the race, the, 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 the race, right? The, the, yeah, can you? Okay, so, so I just want to again remind you of what is this whole task uh, about. So you have four checkpoints to go, each checkpoint worth five marks. So every time you conquer that part of the challenge, you achieve five marks. So those who do only the first one will get five marks, the first and second get 10, first, second and third, 15, and eventually the full mark. Now you don't necessarily get the full mark for each, do you? If you pass it, you will get it, okay. So first, to have motion in a straight line. So if, if your robot can really go in a straight line and doesn't go like this every time, you want it to go in a straight line, but it goes like this, then that's the first, the, first, uh, the first part. Then we want your robot to be able to go straight and then go 90 degrees and then go another 90 degrees. So that's, in, in a way, makes a U-turn. Now, there is a reason why we are doing this, because these are the maneuvers that the robot will need. And we would like you to actually design it so that it is able to achieve all of them. Now, why this is important? Because you know when you think of six wheels, one wheel, three wheels, you need to think of how are we going to steer and control your robot. That's extremely important. Then we will go through an uphill slope of 30 degrees. So we want you to be able to get the robot to go. So we will create the obstacle. Now, now we are, we didn't say this, but we encourage you to build your own track to test the robot on, even before 
the test day. And there'll be a tightrope balancing and maneuvering. Okay? So, so this thing will be, you go like this, straight, then 90 degree, 90 degree, then this is the slope. So this, so this is checkpoint one. You arrive here, you get five marks. You arrive here, you get another five marks. You manage to achieve this, you get another five marks. And then this would be quite a tight kind of maneuver. And if you reach here, this is your final, uh, uh, final destination. This is available on open learning as well. So you could see that here, the length is four meter. This is 1.8 meter. This part is a meter, but here you have only 20 centimeters. So we leave it up to you how to place the boards. You know, the boards, you could do them like this, you could do them like that. That's your choice. Now, the, 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 the things that you will need to weigh would be, if you make your robot in this direction, the vertical direction, you will have less width and you will compromise what? Stability. Stability, so it could just flip. If you go like this, this is a low center of gravity, quite stable, but we have, we have measured the board and we, we make sure that this is going to give you a wonderful and trusting challenge. So this is all done based on the research that we have done. So any, any question about this? Is it, is it clear what is required from you? Yes, there's a question here. Yes, please. At hydro balancing, so it's just that the width becomes smaller yes. at that section. So the balancing is, is going to be... Oh. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's flat, flat. It's not uh, ele ele elevated. Can, uh, okay, I, I can... Is the whole surface flat? So can you, can you say what is that? So the question is... From here to here, is it flat and horizontal? Okay, it will be flat. There's no slope, there's no um, obstacles on it, but it will be elevated. That means it's a distance from the ground. So if your robot does not balance on that 20 cm, it will fall off. So that's how we see your balancing. Because some people might want to make a larger robot than the 20 cm, but as long as the wheels or the legs actually balance within the 20 cm, it's fine. So do you understand? So this is going to be something like a bridge. And there is no barrier at the end. You need to balance within that. So if it falls, then you won't be able to get the final five marks. So you could, you could see that the level of difficulty escalates as you move on. But we make sure that those who at least build a basic robot will be able to get some marks for that. Very good question. Any other question? Yeah, uh, Hans. Uh, if we make a flying robot, do we need to follow the truck? Is this like fly from start to finish? Safe <laughs> uh, robot, robot. Okay, so if you make a flying robot, we will, we will, we will want it. We want to see it going like that. Within, uh, so we will view it maybe with a camera from the top, and as long as it can do that maneuver. Okay. Yes, you will get it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. I. You have a question. Why don't you just ask, please? Yes. 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 Good. Uh, from the starting point, are we supposed to like control first, or can we like just like push push the car to push the car? Okay. <laughs> So, so you question, are you going to have to push it by hand throughout? Is it, possible, is it allowed to maybe push the car, push the, push the car by at hand? At the beginning or throughout? At the, begin at the beginning. No, you cannot push. What you, what you do is, you have an, an iPad, we would like you to use it to control your robot. You cannot push. Yes, yeah. The moment you put it on the start point is offhand. You don't, once you put it in, you can turn it on if there is a, an on point uh, button on it or whatever. The moment you say, okay, hands off, then everything that is connecting you to your robot is 
your iPad. Now again, please surprise us. So you may put a camera on, on it and let the camera feedback a picture to your, uh, to your uh, iPad. It's entirely up to you. Uh, uh, you use your imagination. This is really the basic. The way it looks, we didn't, we didn't prescribe anything. We want you to really go and make different, different robots that look differently, feel differently, and, and um, uh, maneuver differently. Okay? Okay, I'll assume that you guys are fine. And I'll talk about the GAN chart. And I'll talk about the organization chart. And if I have time, I'll talk about uh, the, um, the minutes of the meeting. So maybe you could help me by turning this off, Mike. Have you got a marker pen? Okay. Uh, the offer is still on. The offer is still on. Anytime during the session you feel this is not adding value, not helping you, please leave. Yeah. And uh, uh, I can see that some of you uh, can learn better from your peers. You could just go out, have a coffee. Maybe you could figure out the Gantt chart better. I actually have no issue with that. I just want a good proposal by Friday. So a Gantt chart is a very important, simple, straightforward, commonsensical uh, piece of project management. And it literally has two dimensions to it. One is the time. And one is tasks. So depending on how long the project is taking, the Gantt chart could be hourly, could be daily, could be weekly, could be monthly. So if you are having a project for three years, then you will have January, February, March, April, and so on. If you have a project for 18 weeks, most likely you will do a weekly one. If you have to complete your project within a week, you may do a daily or half daily. So let's say we are going to pick a, a weekly kind of timeline. So, now there are many tools that you could use them. You could, you could just draw it on a piece of paper, but you also could use a Microsoft Project, which is a beautiful tool for, for this. Or you could use even Excel or Word, so we leave that uh, to you. So let's say, which week we started working on this? We end by 16, right? So we are going to have our test by week 16. So by week 16, by hook or crook, your robot should be ready. So I stop at week 16. Now here are the tasks that you are needing to do. So let's say the proposal would be the first task. Next week is week. Okay. And we introduced it when? Okay. So so let's say the proposal, we started it, we, we introduced it to you on week four. We put you into groups. Next week is our week seven. So this is the timeline for the proposal. So by right, the proposal should 
start by week four and end by week seven. There are many ways to do the Gantt chart, but the way I like it, or I usually do it, is this kind of triangle indicates a beginning. This kind of triangle indicates an end. Okay? And also, what I usually do, when you really start, you fill this so it becomes task started. When the task is completed, you fill the triangle so we know that this has started in week four and ended in week seven. Now, a beautiful way of using the Gantt chart would be if I can have you guys write your Gantt charts maybe somewhere here. And maybe we could do that. So we'll assign every group a space. So you will leave this for the entire semester where you could update your Gantt chart and I could just come and have a look and know what's happening. Now let's, let's say, let's say you guys have completed your, your Gantt chart in week six instead. So what has happened was this. We planned that start in week four, end in week seven, but somehow you guys managed to finish it and submit it by week six. So what would you do? So how do I read this? Okay, 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 one person, one person, one person, one person. Who would like to tell me how to read this? So many words, okay. It started on week four and finished on week six. It started in week four and finished on week six. Is that all I can tell from this? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, basically, it started on week four, but it was planned to week at week seven, but it, st it finished off at week six. Week okay, exactly. So this task somehow was planned to finish on week seven, but we managed to finish it one week earlier. So this is how I read it. Don't go and rub this. Now if, instead of this, how do I read this? So this was planned on week four, started on week four, was supposed to finish on week seven, somehow it ended in week nine, for whatever reason. Now, what people sometimes do, which I highly encourage you to do as well, they will put here PIC. You know what PIC is? That's person in charge. The person in charge. So, if this proposal is under Chris, then I know the person to talk to in this group about this is Chris. And here we can have remarks. So, if there is either a delay or even finishing before uh, the timeline, you could actually write some remarks here if you would like to comment on what has happened there. Okay? So this is, let's say, the first task. Now, sometimes, sometimes, we will do it even differently. So someone would say, no, no, this proposal is, is I don't do it like that because before the proposal, I need to do other things. So what do you need to do first? Okay, I need to do uh, uh, information gathering first. So I have to go and gather information, learn about these, how the robots work. I cannot just simply go and write the report. Okay, after that, what will you do? Then 
uh, we will have, uh, after we gather the information, we decide the design concept. So we need to, to agree whether this is going to be three wheel, two wheel, no wheel, flying, we have to make a decision. Only then we will start writing our proposal. So someone like that may do like this. So we start information gathering maybe until week even week six. But after we have started gathering the information, we actually start also thinking of the design concept. So we say three wheel, two wheel, no wheel, legs, wings, uh, levitation, magnetic levitation. They, all these are ways to move it, right? Okay, and then the proposal, we will start writing it maybe here, and we end in week seven. Okay, now when do you think the concept design should end? So by week six, I should, that's it, I should fix my concept design because now I am putting my budget, I am uh, deciding on my summary, on my uh, conclusions, on, so I cannot keep on leaving this open until later. And someone may say, this, so please pay attention to this, I cannot start writing my proposal until I finish my I cannot start the proposal until I finish my design concept. So this becomes, maybe let me write it nice, sorry. So this becomes a prerequisite for this. So I cannot move. Now why this is important? Why this line here is important? Show that what? Show what? Why is this line important? Yes? Okay, so what the, what's the implication? So this is necessary for this. What's the implication? Okay, if this is to be delayed, what will happen to this? This will be delayed as well. Certain, certain tasks, they don't have a prerequisite. So I could, for example, I could, for example, uh, purchase, if I'm building a campus or a house, I could be purchasing uh, uh, or ordering the ICT parts even before the building is complete. That's, that's totally acceptable. But until I finish the foundation, there's no way I can build the wall. So the foundation first. If the foundation is delayed, Building the wall is automatically delayed. So this is an important thing for us to understand. So let's say our, our proposal is complete and approved by, let's say, week seven or week eight. So it's approved. So what would be the next stage? Talking about our robot. Yes? Materials. Materials, acquisition. So, so now the, 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 the lecturer has accepted it's going to be four wheels. I will be needing, I will be using this kind of motors and so on. So, material acquisition. So, we start purchasing or finding out or acquiring the material maybe from the lab. And this can happen only when? Can I start here? Can I start here? I have to start only here. And then 
I go, I don't know, depends on. Now, it's very important to know that there is a D-Day here. The week 16, everything has to be complete. This is, there is a time, a venue, and there is a test. So there is no way we can avoid this. Now, the more we make this relaxed, the less time we have for, after acquiring the material, what do we do? Construction, okay. Or building. So, when can the construction start? Can it, can it start here? Who says yes, raise your hand. Can the construction start here? Is this raising your hand? So, only one. Two. You are too busy, so you don't know what we're talking about. So the question is, can the construction start here? No. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think yes. There is a reason for that. Because you don't necessarily need all the concrete and the cement on and the glass for the campus to be here to start building. So if in the beginning you just need a base and tires, even you don't need the wheel, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the motors yet, you could start building this. Start work, working out how are you going to uh, put the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the wheels in, you start fixing things. So you literally could start building here. And then maybe you go on until week 11, let's say. And just, this is just, just, after construction, what do we do? Yes, yes? Testing. Testing. We need to test. We cannot just build, build, build. We have to test. Okay. So, when can the testing start? Week 11. Week 12. 11. Can we start earlier? Can we start earlier? You can actually even start at week nine. The moment you build the base, you start, does it turn? Does it not turn? If I push it, will it go straight? You don't even, you may, you may have not even purchased the, the, the motors yet and you could start this. So the testing could actually end here. After the testing, what do we do? Yes? Improvise. Improve, improve. So, so maybe you will need to improve, redesign. So while you are testing, you discover that this one wheel concept is not working. Then you need to come up with an alternative design, communicate it back to the lecturer, get it approved, and work it out from there. So this ha these things have to be built in your, your, uh, your process. Now, the redesign, if needed at all, may start maybe here and should end also very soon. And then you could do a retesting if you wish. Yeah. By, if you want to really be safe and manage risk, you set for yourself a new deadline. You say, my robot is going to be ready by week 15. So the, the test is week 16. I want to finish by week 15 or even 14. Depends on what you want. So that if anything happens, you still have time to, uh, to manage the crisis. Rather than the last touch to the robot is made the eve of the testing day is going to be very risky because some component may just fail or, or, or something may just break and then you'll be in uh, a bad shape. So as you move on, this is a living document. When you start, you shade it. You finish on time, you shade it. You, you have to change it, change it and communicate it not only to your team members, but also to me. And here, if you have, this is Mike, this is Hafiz, 
This is Chris again. Then it's very easy for me to see if anyone is maybe not necessarily doing his or her job or maybe anyone needs help or assistance so that they can do their job. Rather than everyone, you know, claim that everything is okay, but the team is not really progressing. Is that clear? Okay, do you have any question? So if you have no question, uh, yes, there's a question here, yes. Just give me a second. So, so sir, the, the gunshot, gunshot is into our proposal. Yeah, how, how, so we have like two, two gunshot means one is inside proposal and one is outside the proposal, the gunshot. Okay. So the question is, the question is, I, I'm going to put this GAN chart into the proposal. Do you want me to have another one? That's your question, right? Uh, then, yeah. then how to like finish is, uh, are, are, we, are we estimate the GAN chart inside the proposal? The GAN chart in the proposal is a plan. The GAN chart that I hope to have here is a living document. So the one in the proposal, you are telling me, this is my plan to give you a working robot by week 16. So this is the Gantt chart tells me how will you use one resource, which is time. But in the proposal, you also tell me how will you use another resource, which is money. So that's the budget. And also you will tell me how would roughly the, 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 uh, the robot will look like. So the proposal is a sort of a contract between us. When I approve it, it means we agree that you will be successful if you make a robot that meets the requirement and is light, meets the requirement and look beautiful, meets the requirement and use of recyclable materials or whatever you agree on. Now, when the rubber hit the road, when you start building, you will realize that, oh, I need more time. I need more money. I actually don't know how to do that. I've burned my board. Uh, uh, my uh, members don't, don't cooperate with me. These are the reality of life which we anticipate and we will help you overcome and also we will use that to develop you. So if I can have a living document which could be here could be on open learning, could be, it's up to you, then at least if I look, if I want to see how are you doing as a team, I could just look at that and I know what's happening. Does it make sense? Yeah, so the one that you give is your plan, the one that I hope that we have it as a living document, whether physically or online, or even in a Dropbox or whatever form we agree upon, is going to be something that we both can uh, can can look at and use to communicate. Good question. Any other question? Okay, so if there's no other question about the Gantt chart, I'll quickly talk about the organizational chart. So, uh, question, comment. You have a question, okay. Okay. So the question is, is it necessary to update me on each and every task, you mean? Or you just keep it for yourself? It's very necessary to update me, or Mike and Chris. Because from my experience, if I don't do that, no one will update the Gantt chart. That's my experience. So when there is a sort of pressure, then you guys will, will update it. And when you update it, you'll realize that, oh, this proposal is not, is not complete. It's not going to complete. What can we do now? OK? So this is what we would like to, to do. So now let me talk about the organization chart. You know, in any team, uh, 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 a company, a department, 
uh, maybe you can leave it first. I'll just use this part, so just in case in the future. There, there will be a hierarchy of responsibility. So uh, who can approve what, who is responsible for what, and things like that. So we would like each team to have a team leader. And under the team leader, we can have different people working on a variety of things. Now, the team leader in really a successful team is not a person who is bossy and directing people to do this and do that. Often the team leader is a person with some ma ma management skills and often he or she is going to do even more work compared to the others. So the team leader would be someone who will be responsible for communicating the, let's say, the team status. And if there is any difficulty that the team is facing, then the team leader hopefully will rise up and play a role in resolving that or communicating this to either myself or any of my colleagues so that we can help you resolve any issue whether within the team or within your environment. So for example, the, the subdivision of, of, of uh, uh, or the divisions under the team leader could be based on tasks. So maybe we can say one will be mainly responsible for video editing, example. One will be mainly responsible for constructing. Maybe one will be responsible for purchasing. Maybe one will be responsible for testing. Just for example. So that's one way of, of putting it. So let's say the team leader is Chris, but Chris is also responsible for the video. So it's not necessarily I'm just leader, don't ask me to do anything, I'm, I'm busy leading you. It doesn't work like that. So maybe construction will be done by Mike. And uh, purchasing maybe will be done by uh, uh, Hafiz. And testing maybe Mike, again, example. So this is one way of, of doing it. The other way of doing it, it could be uh, based on what, what, what are you good at? And this could maybe change uh, from week one to week five, you'll be doing this. From week five to the other week, you'll be doing uh, another task. So that's entirely up to you. But what I would like to suggest is you, <clears throat> you appoint someone to take care of your finance, so you have the leader. Okay, you have something? Yeah. So we will have someone to take care of finance. And he, everyone will be also building and testing, but mainly, so for example, uh, we are asking you to pay us the deposit when you take these boards and also use up to 75 ringgits to build you, whatever remaining of your robot. So someone will need to collect the money from each and every one of you. Keep record of all the receipts of the thing that you, will, you have purchased. So if you've purchased things within the 75 ringgit and you want to claim it back, it has to be supported by an original receipt. So this will be, I, I suggest, that becomes a responsibility of, let's say, one person. Now, maybe you will also get someone to be responsible for the documentation. So this would be things like updating your Gantt chart, keeping the minutes of, of the meetings and things like that. Now for the minutes of the meetings, I want every one of you to write minutes of the meeting. But we have for the whole team, a person who keeps everything intact, for example. Uh, you may say that, again, materials 
is under X or Y or Z, so that person will be taking care of uh, purchasing the materials because maybe he or she lives closer to the place where we can purchase them or maybe he or she has a car. I leave that to you, how to decide. The key thing is everyone has to be able to do and show that he or she did some work. Now again you could have the video maybe on its own or under the documentation. That's entirely up to you. So if you decide that the documentation part is taking care of, so let's say the leader is again Chris. Let's say the documentation is led by Mike. So under him, Chris will do the video. And Hafiz will do maybe the minutes. So you could see that Chris here is a team leader, but he's also responsible for the video, which is being parked under the communication of the team. And that is maybe because uh, uh, Chris is good in video editing, and we see this as, but Mike is able to give us a complete kind of picture of how we would like to, um, to present the team to the world. Now, why I don't want to give you a standard organization chart is very simple, because every team is going to be different. So maybe you'll say, you put here video, but none of us can do video. So how do we do it? So those who maybe don't have that skill, there is another way to achieve the same outcome by having a, a, a different organization chart. So is it clear how the organization chart works? Okay, good. So I think if you have no question, then I would like you to sit according to your robo race group. So we want every group to be on one table and then we will go around and we will be uh, discussing and, and, and I hope that you'll be able to complete your GAN chart and org chart by today. So that will be directly going into your project proposal. In our group, there's yes. only the three of us. Yes. So, yeah, because our two other members, one third, and the other one is taking a different course. Yes. So, we feel that um, the work is just too much to be divided between the three of us. Yeah, so we were wondering if we could like split and join other groups because together with not only this project but our upcoming projects and our tests and exams, it's too much work to do. Only the three of us. Yeah. So uh, you, you think it's going to be a lot of work, right? Yeah. From my experience, sometimes a bigger team actually doesn't even become worse because everyone will think that someone else will do the job, but they end up doing, no one is doing the job. And I've seen also teams where only one person works and pulls the entire team with him or her. That person would be actually better off if he or she was on their own. However, choice is yours. So, um, seeing that it's our first project, we don't really we haven't had like the class of what to do and how to do anything yet. We don't want do you to think anyone else knows. No, that's why we feel that it's better if we are in a bigger team, so at least we get to know how to do things first before we take it on. I'm on fine, our own. and there's a reason why I want this to be recorded. Because later when you go in a bigger team, because now if the, the other team has five or six and I add you and become seven, for example, then this, these are also not very good numbers for the team, okay? So you will end up by maybe losing at the end of the day rather than learning, okay? So is this what you want? Yeah. For our first thing, I think it will be a good idea. I, I, she spoke to me earlier yeah. and I told her I think this is a wonderful ex opportunity for you guys to say the three of us 
can do as much work as six people because we have organized it in a very lean manner. Now, apparently, um, you. I was trying. What did you try? Try to discuss about saying how we script this new words and stuff, but okay. it's still not working. Okay. Plus, so now, uh, you. How is the progress on your uh, proposal? Keep up with yeah. Keep up with what? Like you see the proposal is you literally just sit and think. You on your own, you could just think of how would this robot look like. You just opted, just because you don't have seven people, you cannot do a proposal. Which is just writing thing on a piece of paper. Do, do you see the issue? I, I really don't think the issue is there's so much work. Mm -hmm. I think the issue is you didn't do any work. Do, do you see, do you see the, yeah. yeah. Now, if you go, choice is yours. What I'm telling you is what you will be losing. So now I could put you in another group and the other group maybe they will do the work. And you need to be very careful. For me, if you have a bigger team, I actually want to see your, personal contribution I'm going yeah, to judge yeah. you for your own personal contribution okay. if you have a smaller team then you could show me more contribution per individual but if you have a bigger team then the, uh, the okay. contribution that is available for you could be less yeah choice is yours do you want to think about it for a while do you want to think about it for a while or you just want me to split you out put you in different teams you feel bad? You don't have to feel bad because you still have time. But I can tell you, is by Friday, you actually don't know what has happened to your uh, proposal. You have you didn't know what to do, and that then you that will have implications because I don't. I think the time is running out. Yeah. Because when she, to be very honest with you, when she came to see me, she said, you guys are in different groups, you don't have to have the time to meet. Now, if I take you and put you here, will you have the time to meet? You just said, yeah. But maybe you still don't have the time to meet. And the whole idea is how you make the time to meet. It's not the, and, and if, you, if the three of you finding it difficult to find time to meet, four will become four times more, Five will become four times more difficult to get five people to meet. Yeah. And six will be six, and ten will be, and seven be like impossible to get everyone at the same time to meet. So, so everything has pros and cons, and choice is yours. Mm. Think about it. Okay, you know what you're supposed to do, right? Do a draft. Of? Draft of? and Oak Chart. So there are four of you, right? Okay. Five. Where's the fifth? Okay. I'm here to help you. If you don't mind. Our stuff, we started very late because we couldn't get everyone together to have a proper discussion. Right. If you don't mind, please. You don't want to speak. Please. Thank you. So you, you said that you started late. So now on the last week, we only have enough time. No, we don't have enough time to have enough information to come with a proper design and finish the proposal. Okay, and wh why you guys have started late? We couldn't okay. find a time because each session has different time for the school works and we are busy in the weekends and stuff. I see. Some of us are not available on the weekends. I see. So, how do you plan to solve this? Because if you don't have time to work on the planning, how are you going to have time to build the robot? I think we will take less time to plan. As in, we just try to finish all the planning within this week, and then the rest we just go slow and steady, like similar to yours. 
No, you see my, my issue, and I really want you to take this very seriously. I think you are going to face a lot of difficulties because as you move on, you know the planning is the part you, that you could have done over the Skype or over the internet. You could have just thrown something, emailed it, people commented on it. If we discuss through Facebook, can we write it in a meeting block? Why not? You see the meeting doesn't necessarily mean, need you physically to be there. There are meetings that happen over the phone. The only thing is you, you record that you said that, I contributed this, you contradicted that, you objected, eventually the consensus is this. And we agreed finally on this. And we agreed that you will do this and by next week you will be finishing that and this task is yours and you have to do it by when. This is, this is the outcome. You could do it over chat. You would do it with WhatsApp. Entirely up to you. The main thing is commitment. The main thing is that you agree when you leave this meeting, what will you bring by when? So it's not like we meet and, oh, I like you, uh, you are very, uh, very nice, and then uh, let's build a robot. Yeah, yeah, I agree, let's build a robot. You know, building the robot is very important, isn't it? Yes, it's then we leave, so who will build the robot? Uh, don't. Actually, no one. Normally, this one, every, everyone will think that someone is going to do the work and normally no one is going to do the work. So what I would like to end up with, your, your, your meeting log is, what is the action? So you ask yourself, after the discussion, so now what is the action required? Just ask yourself. So what have we, what, what do we have to do next and who's going to do it? And that question is going to really drive things because the moment you say, uh, we expect you to give us this by tomorrow 6 p.m. And they say, no, no, no way because you know, I have this commitment with my mom, we have to go. Then straight away, no, she cannot. But if we say, you know, this has to be finished by 6 p.m. She said, yes, I think it has to be finished by 6 p.m. You think that she'll do it. She think that you'll do it. Both of you go and do something else. And the task is not done. So for you to be together is not a prerequisite. And that's why what I would like you to do is, if you are facing a difficulty or a challenge or you don't know what to do about anything, you have to come and see me or Mike or Chris or post a question on open learning so that we could help you. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the other issue that I see is this. You will need to find a common time to work. Don't really have. It's like uh, we are from section one, section two, section three. Okay. What do you have after this? Um, English. And until when? Uh, five thirty. And, and our uh, section we don't have anything on. After this we are off holiday. After this. Yeah. So five thirty will be done. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you start maybe five thirty to seven thirty, for example, today? You see, you guys now, university... She need to go to back to yeah, Sarawak. Yeah, she needs to go back to Sarawak and like... Okay, so, so that, no, that's fine. So what about Monday? You, ha you have to come up with a session to work. Otherwise, are you telling me you are planning to fail this? <laughs> yeah, so how are you going to do it? Alternatively, alternatively, we agree if you want, if you, you, you think this is the best way, you do the design. I don't recommend it, but ult ultimately, maybe this. So you make the video, you make the design, you make the wheels, you make this. How do she make the wheels? Ah, yes. So now you tell me, how do you plan to work? So you are telling me that you don't have time. So how are you going to build your robot? You didn't even sit together to plan a Gantt chart. I don't want excuses. You don't ask me, you tell me how you are going to make it. So that I know this 10 marks thing that's coming on Friday, how are you going to do it? You tell me. So Monday, what time you finish? 5.30. Five thirty. The other guy? 
Yeah, we, so you don't even know each other's timetable, and you put, so 5.30 to 8 on Monday, what do you do? So that's an example of a session that you could make it, okay. Um, uh, Tuesday, what time you finish? Two. Two. Four. Five. Five. Two. Two. So you guys finish at two. So for example, what you could do is... So actually you are finishing at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, so wh so why don't you work for an hour after the class? It's like when we have to uh, set the time, yes. and somebody will say, no, I need to go back. So it's like that. So somebody will do something. I see. So that's what we need then is planning. It's that the, the, they will come and tell last, last minute. minute. Yeah. So we can't do anything. It's like, it's very last don't go back and say, okay. I have to. And that person is not you, is not you, is not you, and is not you. So is the guy who is not in today? Uh, no, no. It, it wasn't really last week. It's just that he said he he don't want to stay too late because he stays really far. Just just listen to me. So it's actually only one person who's telling you that. Apparently, it's no you, no you, no you, no you. It's the other person, right? I don't have transport at night. Uh, also. Just listen to me, please. The person who come last minute is not you, right? No. Is not you. Is not you. Is not you. It's not last week, it's just, it's a disagreement, like, we all agree. Okay, the person that cannot stay late is not you, is not you, is not you, and is not you. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So can you give him a task that he can, he can do from home? Because you see now, what you are telling me, four out of five, which is 80% of the group, actually can meet. But because one person is unable to stay, you decided not to do anything. But I thought we need to like video it for all the group to be in the video. You need to video it. Yeah, right. Video what? Video throughout the whole process of just about the robot. I think we introduced the robot. Okay, are you asking me a question or are you making a statement? Okay, so you asked me the question in week four? I mean, if this is a question in your mind, you should have asked earlier. So you're talking about the video for the robot, right? So the video for the robot need to show the process so that, for example, and the process is not necessarily a video, it could be now. Like a lot of pictures that you put in a video can. Okay, so, so have, you, have you actually gotten any of your meetings Recorded already. One camera, another camera. You've gotten your meeting now recorded. This will be available on YouTube. You, this will be ready materials for your robot video. Why not? Who told you you cannot? You don't make assumptions, okay? So you already have footage, which is our classes, this meeting, the mission, the vision, whatever we've done, you can use all that. Later on, you can take pictures, can make sketches, is entirely up to you. The vi what goes in the video is up to you. So you guys need to make a decision, really, if you are unable to work because I'm very worried about this group now because if to put things on the piece of paper you are unable to do it then you will have real issues when it comes to building the real robot okay so now when it comes to the organ chart how do you how do you plan to to so who, who's going to be the team leader? So you are the team leader. Who's going to be the uh, finance manager? So you are the finance manager. Who will take care of the parts? Yeah, because you know, these parts need to stay together. You need to have a place to lock them, maybe within the lab or in a locker or whatever. And that person needs to be always available when you want to work on them. Okay? Yeah. So what would you do? 
things and yeah. Design. yeah. So this research on designing, does it need five of you to be to the, together? No. So you see, these are the things that there are certain tasks. Actually, you don't need to be together at all. So the moment you design it in that way, then things can happen and you can progress. So literally, our you know, other fifth member could be now searching, designing, building, communicating, texting, Skyping, Whatsapping, whatever. Okay. Thanks a lot. Do you do you do you do you see the possibilities or? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And please, when you have an, a, such an obstacle, like that is threatening ten percent of your mark, you cannot just keep quiet because you need to take ownership of your learning and of your progress. Because if you don't do it, who, who will do it? Yeah, so now, how do you make sure that you have a proper Gantt chart, proper organization chart? So, two items of your proposal is completed. Then, who will be writing what, who will be doing what, then at, at least we could see the light and assign tasks for the person who is unable to stay late. And maybe you, you make it a point that you come early, I don't know. Do you have a lunch break? What different time? Lunch break cannot. Not even... Okay. What's the name of the other person? Justin. Okay. So, every Friday, from 12 to 2.30, are you telling me you have a class? Um, actually, Friday morning we can. It's just this morning he couldn't make it possible. No, 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 no. Every Friday, 12 to 2.30. We have a break from 1 to 2. Huh? 1 to 2.30. Uh, Who has class 1 to 2.30? No, we have, our break is 1 to 2.30. We have class 11 to 1 on Friday. Okay, so 1 to 2.30. So you have one and a half hour every Friday. So why don't you just use that? So now you are telling me, in the beginning, all, all, all different time. When I find you a space, time. so now Friday morning you can use it. Only Friday morning. So you have Friday morning and Friday afternoon, where all the team is available, right? Why don't you use that? Why don't you make this the time for the robot? <laughs> You, uh, is there any reason that you cannot use this time? So, because this is an important project, dedicate the, 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 the common time for that and make a commitment. Otherwise, you are going to fail. Okay? Yeah. Please do something about that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yes. Uh, we can get the company to kind of sponsor us, right? Okay. Yeah, we can. Is this your father's company? My father works in a consultation firm. Okay. What What do you need? Uh, basically, our most expensive single item it will be the engine. The motor. Yes. Okay. So. Um, We've been going through the internet and seeing like the cheapest. The cheapest is around 210 uh, ringgit for uh, a really powerful, like for a cheap, powerful engine. Okay. And we need a uh, basically we want to uh, see if we can get a company to sponsor us if that's allowed. See, this is this is something very interesting because. Getting sponsorship is a good thing, a good skill. But if this sponsorship is actually your father helping you, does it count as sponsorship? This is not really sponsorship. This is going to be very unfair because if if it's if it's you guys use your family support, then I should open it to everyone because other people could also. Then if you want to. 
pay. So, so I just want you to imagine the situation. Maybe your dad can give you 200 ringgit. Right? His dad can give him 1,000. The other guy say, my dad can give me 10K. You know, then you will say, not fair, right? Why he got, because he, has, he can afford it. So there is a reason why we limit this. There's a reason. Okay. okay. So, so now, now, if you could really show me that this is a genuine sponsorship. Okay. So then, at the company we should... No, no, it could be from your whoever company, but it really has to be that this is a company that you went to, and show, show them, and they really have liked it, and, there is, and, and, and then I will consider. You have to show me before. Okay. Because I am sure the moment I allow you to use a bigger motto, the other guy say, I also want to, I also got a sponsorship. And then, if the other sponsorship is bigger than your sponsorship, you will say, hmm? <laughs> why, why? Or because he can afford it, he can have a, a better robot. Yeah. Did, did you see the point? Yes. Yeah. So we, uh, you must go to, you must go to the, in, if you want to get a sponsorship from a company, you must do it. Uh, it has to be a genuine them, sponsorship. You have to give them a proposal and Sarah. You have to really show me that they, they really would like to sponsor this, not because there is someone who wants to help you. Okay, yeah. That, does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. Because I have to be fair to everyone as well. Yeah. yeah. Any other question? Who's, who's the team leader? Ah, he's the one who will bring the sponsorship. <laughs> so who is the finance manager? Okay. Who will be keeping the parts? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you will need to be, and, and you guys need to work out in such a way that at each time, you know, there is, um, yeah, you agree. Don't just simply, let's say he wants to go somewhere and say, okay, we want to work on the robot now. So I think, like if you have a, 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 a common slot in, on Friday morning or Friday afternoon, or you, you make this like a scheduled thing to work and progress things. Okay? Great. Thanks. So, so about, about the progress since last, last meeting, meeting what, should, should, yeah, what, what does, does it actually define? define the, what should it write? In the minutes of the meeting? No, I mean like, not minutes, it's like um, the, the progress since the last meeting. meeting. Yeah. Okay, that, okay. Yes. So, so let's say last meeting, uh, we agree that you will be finishing the GAN chart, you will be doing the uh, org chart, and you will be finding as information about this specific motor to be used. Okay, so the progress is, is the GAN chart ready? So happily done then, the progress is GAN chart which was supposed to be ready is happily done. So what about you, your GAN chart, is it ready? Yes. So no, no, I'm, I'm just giving an example. Oh, so the GAN oh, chart is ready. ready. Yes, ready. So that's progress. Oh. The motor, yes, ready. But this is half done. Then that's the progress since last oh, meeting. Right, right. So, so we, we just started our first meeting, meeting yeah. that we didn't write anything. Is it? Uh, this is your first meeting. No, before, before that we had. A, we had so a in the first meeting, there's no progress since last meeting because there is no last meeting. But at the end of each meeting, we should leave thinking of you know what you should bring next meeting okay what you should bring next meeting what you should bring next meeting what you should bring next meeting that's the best meeting that everyone knows what is his or her responsibility for the next meeting so we start the meeting by saying what's your name jonathan so jonathan we you promised to bring us uh, this proposal is the proposal ready yeah then yes so you will take this we have a look at it yes we are fine uh, what's your name uh nick so nick we, you, you said uh, you have to give us this uh, org chart, is it ready? No, you see, because I have this difficulty, then okay, when do you think you can give it to us? Can I give it to you next meeting? Yes, next meeting. So we write this, and this becomes your task for next meeting. Uh, then becomes a meaningful meeting. Yeah. Okay? okay? Great. So it's something like a timetable to... It's not a timetable. To leaders that when, when what, what should be finished by when? It's something. No, that's your Gantt chart. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, but when you meet, you will, you will tell us why you didn't finish, what are the difficulties that you are facing, how can we help you so that you can achieve the task eventually. That's the role of the meeting. Okay? 
Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.